Hey, Dave County with Head Games Motorworks, and today we're going to check out SI's brand new Raptor valve. Check it out. Hey guys, so SI, SI valves, you can look them up. I know uh, not everybody knows of them, but they are a pretty big deal. And uh, they came to us, they said, hey, would you like to help us come up with a Raptor valve? And I was ecstatic, of course, because nobody makes one. Now we've been making them custom for quite a few years and uh, it's very, very expensive and not a lot of people want to do it. And it would be really nice to offer something that is off the shelf and we can just order it instead of waiting weeks and weeks for it. And uh, SI has delivered. So now what we're gonna do today is we are gonna check them out. We're gonna flow test them actually against OEM and we're gonna flow test them against the Head Games valve. Which one's gonna win? Of course, I think that, you know, Head Games is gonna be badass, but you can't get it. Follow me. On the exhaust side, you have what looks maybe like a black nitride valve and the bottom of the valve you see on it has this uh, little knot there. It's a little, uh, it makes the valve look a little bit bigger. I'm sorry guys if it's not in, in focus. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to up the game. I'm trying to do a uh, camera and I'm learning this. So uh, we got a triple groove just like the OEMs. And there you go. And that's the... So the margin is pretty much, this is a stock valve. Now the stock valve I've heard is sodium filled. I'm not sure of this. It is lighter, um, but I'm not a big fan of sodium valve because when you make big power, the sodium will fail. Uh, so here is the head games. This is one of the valves that we used to make. Um, until this now, I guess, the single groove. And again, we switched it over to a single groove for cost effectiveness, which it didn't do. And we did it for the retainer um, or the valve so it wouldn't spin. Now, the tulip on this thing is freaking beautiful. So if you compare the two, look at that. You see that? See that beautifulness? That is what I'm talking about. And here is the SI valve. We compare the three. I would say the head game sure is beautiful, but yeah, this one's easy to get. And it's much, much cheaper and it's not sodium filled. So that is my guy if we were gonna get one. So the margin's a little bit thicker and the tulip looks very, very close to OEM. Uh, I don't see this going to be a big, big gain uh, goes going to the valve. And if I were to guess this guy, this guy, the head games, I think that one might win. There's the intake valve, stock OEM intake valve. And you'll see that it has this like little step here. I don't know what, I guess that's, this is probably where they fuse it is, uh, is right down there in the bottom. And it's got this really nasty big ass back cut on it up into the, I think, I don't know if it's a 45, cause we don't use these things at all. We switch everything to a 45 and it's got a triple groove lock. And, um, and the triple groove lock is so that the valve will spin inside of the retainer. And um, that is something the Europeans have been doing forever. And now, here is the head games valve. So this is a valve that we've been getting made for years. Uh, it's not commercially available, but you can get them installed here and you can see that we did a undercut. See how the valve, the stem is undercut compared to the OEM. And if you go up here, you get a single groove. Single groove versus triple groove. The single groove we thought would be cheaper to make because it's only one groove. Uh, I know that the triple groove sometimes is a pain in the ass to make. And, um, and what we learned was uh, it wasn't really that much different to make. And uh, the cost was not there. This is a uh, $70 or so per valve. And um, that's the triple groove or the single groove. But the real doodad is, uh, well, maybe it's that bug right there. But it's, uh, 
and it's in that tulip. So you can see the design change was pretty, pretty drastic. Now here is the SI valve. So the SI valve, we have a really big back cut again, really big back cut. I don't know what, I haven't talked to them yet about what degree back cut they put in it. And uh, moving on up, they did a triple groove and uh, we're gonna flow them and see what each does. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna flow intake valves. We're gonna flow the OEM, we're gonna flow the head games slash Ferrea custom valve and we're gonna flow it against the new SI valve and see which one wins. We're gonna do intake and then we're gonna do exhaust so just keep on watching. Results are gonna be at the end. What I'm doing here is making an orifice and the orifice is just gonna make it so the air, it, it basically makes it so it's like an intake manifold on it. It's gonna straighten the air as it comes into the intake manifold. Uh, I'm sorry, into the intake port. And you're doing that for flow. And you actually pick up flow from just doing this. And that's uh, part of the reason why we don't share a lot of flow numbers because you don't know if they did this or not did this. And if you uh, on some heads, you can make the floor longer and it'll, it'll change the flow numbers. So it's best to just not even try to compare. I'm not gonna lie, I'm freaking surprised about the results and uh, I can't wait to share them with you. Keep watching. All right, so we finished the intake and now it's time to do the exhaust. We're gonna stick it back on the flow bench and uh, change everything over. This is gonna be done without a pipe. Now, a lot of guys don't know that uh, another way to manipulate flow numbers is to put a pipe on it. And what I mean by a pipe is you can put an exhaust pipe on it. So an exhaust pipe, although we don't have anything for this size flange, uh, an exhaust pipe would increase the flow numbers uh, sometimes dramatically. And this is a way that people can manipulate flow numbers because they say, they don't tell you if they did it with or without a, a pipe. And uh, then you don't know uh, where they got those numbers. And then you're trying to compare somebody who didn't do it with a pipe and somebody with it did, and you, you don't really know what you're reading. Um, so we're gonna do it without a pipe. We're gonna do all three of them without a pipe. We're just gonna run through them. To say I'm surprised about the results uh, is an understatement because I did not expect, well, I kind of expected the exhaust to, uh, uh, to not be so crazy different because the, uh, the valve looks pretty much the same as OEM. And I, I don't think there's really not much you could do to the valve that would, I mean, the margin's a little bit bigger, so it's gonna take heat away from the valve, but um, you know, I guess they could have put a big tulip on it, but they didn't, thankfully. Um, because if you did, then it's gonna add weight and it's already heavier. As you can see, the SI valve just really took off from the crack of the valve up to 300 thousandths of lift, and then all the valves taper off, and I think that's the cylinder head, that's not the valve. It's just that the head kind of doesn't do anything because of the design of the bowl area, which we're gonna take care of in another video. But as you can see, the SI valve is the clear winner here. Uh, although I didn't, wasn't really uh, keen on the back cut. So the back cut on the valve, I thought was a little, um, it just, it's like a ridge. And uh, I, that's the only way else I, I can explain it. So it's a big ridge, it's kind of, um, you can feel it. So usually 
uh, the valve and the back cut is kind of a smooth transition and these aren't smooth at all, but it helped. It helped flow it. Now the theory is, and what we're gonna test is in the pocket port. So, you know, on the OEM, the air is made to go to the backside of the valve because well, at least on low lift, it's made to hit the backside of the valve. And that is because it's a, it's a DI, but it's also port injection, right? So um, that's right. So the Raptor has both. And, you know, in, in some of these things, they're all theories and you, you want to explain it, but you can't because, you know, it's another theory. And we're just throwing theories around. So what we're just going to do is test it. And then we can relay the test to you guys instead of like theorizing why or what, uh, I think that's the best thing to do. But either way, the valve works. It outflowed the, if outflowed the OEM, it outflowed the head games valve, even though I think that the head games valve looks awesome because it's undercut and everything else, it actually didn't care. It didn't care at all. And uh, that is kind of mind blowing to me. I, um, and, it, and it was also lighter than our valve. And um, so from now on, uh, head games heads are gonna have this off the shelf valve, which was the purpose of the whole situation anyway, was so we can get away from doing custom stuff and we can have an off the shelf option and um, SI delivered. And I just wanna thank SI for the opportunity for doing this because uh, you know, it was our first time and I thought that, uh, I thought it was pretty cool that they would choose us over, you know, who knows over there? I'm sure they have a lot of connections and they chose head games to, uh, to help them with this. All right, that's gonna do it for us today. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Make sure you get a subscription because this is a part of a series. So we're gonna do guides, valve job, and flow test this dude one more time. And uh, then we're gonna go over to some parts and uh, it's gonna go off to Jeff so he can make some jam with it. So be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Toodles. Head game.